A year into my marriage, the fairy tale shattered. Betrayal hung heavy as I checked into a hotel, leaving the wreckage behind. Then came an envelope, addressed to me, containing a pre-filled divorce form. Kevin and his mistress, oblivious to my departure, thought a vacation was the perfect solution. Their audacity was breathtaking, but the form was a twisted advantage. Got it, I texted my lawyer, a steely resolve forming. Filing today, moving out tomorrow. This wasn't the happily ever after I'd envisioned. At 36, a pharmacist, I was considered a late bloomer in love. Most saw me with grown kids, not basking in new love. My husband Kevin, 10 years my junior, was the miracle, a handsome man who defied expectations. Our wedding photos, radiating joy, were displayed proudly. Finding love at my age felt like a dream, working alongside a charming younger man even more so. Our pharmacy rarely saw young clientele, and work had become my comfort zone. But two years ago, that comfort shifted. Excuse me, a voice broke the routine. Please help me. Looking up, I encountered a vision, my future husband, then 24. A salesman injured in a traffic accident, he needed pain patches. He was candy for the eyes, a fleeting moment for my married colleagues and me. We swooned silently, powerless to his charm. He was a TV idol come to life. Here's your medication, I said, suppressing a nervous flutter. He smiled, and our brief exchange sent shivers down my spine. His visits continued. Each time, medication and a brief exchange were our only connection. This would be his last refill, I thought, a pang of disappointment mixing with relief. As I retrieved his patches, a post-it note caught my eye. Scribbled on it were numbers and letters. Was it a work code? Intrigued, I pocketed the note, unaware of the life-altering message it held. Fast forward to the present. The note turned out to be his number. We began a clandestine romance, culminating in a whirlwind marriage. But the dream soon turned dark. Confirmation of my pregnancy coincided with the discovery of Kevin's affair. The betrayal was a double blow. Leaving the house, I found refuge in a hotel room, a stark contrast to the life I'd envisioned. Then came the envelope with the divorce form, a bizarre attempt from Kevin and his mistress to expedite the process. Their insensitivity fueled my determination. They'd underestimated me. This great timing for a trip they'd discussed, oblivious to my presence, would be their rude awakening. A single post-it note, stuck to a prescription bottle, shattered my world. It wasn't the usual instructions or doctor's scrawl. This one sported a string of digits. An ID for a messaging app, perhaps? Confusion clouded my mind. Why a contact note on a prescription? My question to the colleagues, usually buzzing with married chatter, hung heavy in the air. Embarrassment pricked me as their stares turned into amused suspicion. Was I oblivious? Bragging? One of them, with a dramatic flourish, slammed paper and pen on the counter. Write down your contact details, she commanded. Only then did it hit me. This was his way of slipping his number past everyone. No bragging, no naivety, just disbelief that a charming younger man like him would be interested in me. Armed with sudden clarity, I scribbled my number and hurried back. Sorry for the wait, I mumbled, handing him the medication with practiced calm. This time, however, a folded piece of paper, holding my digits, peeked out from under the plaster. That night, the silent struggle raged within me. My fingers hovered over my phone, screen dark, yearning for connection battling fear. A sudden message notification startled me, his invitation to dinner. An easy yes, followed by dates blossoming into love, culminating in marriage two years later. One date emboldened by a glass of wine, I asked, why a woman of my age? My question stemmed from the initial shock when I learned his age. I thought you were in your 20s until, well, dinner. He shrugged. Surprise, that's all. If you like someone, you go for it, right? Age, in his eyes, was irrelevant. A wave of shame washed over me for letting age define my happiness. But worries remained. Finances, sharing wedding expenses felt awkward. Being a pharmacist, I earned considerably more than my young salesman husband. My savings dwarfed his. Did it bother him, earning less? Did he feel inadequate, supporting a new life at 26? Let's split it 50. 50, he declared.
I'll work hard. He mirrored my earlier concern, erasing it with loving determination. By our wedding day, every doubt had vanished, replaced by pure joy. Friends and colleagues envied our fairy tale. It felt perfect, destined for happily ever after. The first three months were pure bliss. He'd race home from work, weekends were hand-in-hand -hand adventures, and he embraced household chores. All that remained for our picture-perfect life was a child. But given my age, a seed of worry began to sprout. A single post-it note, stuck to a prescription bottle, shattered my world. It wasn't the usual instructions or doctor's scrawl. This one sported a string of digits, an ID for a messaging app, perhaps? Confusion clouded my mind. Why a contact note on a prescription? My question to the colleagues, usually buzzing with merry chatter, hung heavy in the air. Embarrassment pricked me as their stares turned into amused suspicion. Was I oblivious? Bragging? One of them, with a dramatic flourish, slammed paper and pen on the counter. Write down your contact details, she commanded. Only then did it hit me. This was his way of slipping his number past everyone. No bragging, no naivety, just disbelief that a charming younger man like him would be interested in me. Armed with sudden clarity, I scribbled my number and hurried back. Sorry for the wait, I mumbled, handing him the medication with practiced calm. This time, however, a folded piece of paper, holding my digits, peeked out from under the plaster. That night, the silent struggle raged within me. My fingers hovered over my phone, screen dark, yearning for connection, battling fear. A sudden message notification startled me, his invitation to dinner. An easy yes, followed by dates, blossoming into love, culminating in marriage two years later. One date, emboldened by a glass of wine, I asked, why a woman of my age? My question stemmed from the initial shock when I learned his age. I thought you were in your 20s until, well, dinner. He shrugged. Surprised, that's all? If you like someone, you go for it, right? Age, in his eyes, was irrelevant. A wave of shame washed over me for letting age define my happiness. But worries remained. Finances. Sharing wedding expenses felt awkward. Being a pharmacist, I earned considerably more than my young salesman husband. My savings dwarfed his. Did it bother him, earning less? Did he feel inadequate, supporting a new life at 26? Let's split it 50, 50, he declared. I'll work hard. He mirrored my earlier concern, erasing it with loving determination. By our wedding day, every doubt had vanished, replaced by pure joy. Friends and colleagues envied our fairy tale. It felt perfect, destined for happily ever after. The first three months were pure bliss. He'd race home from work, weekends were hand-in-hand -hand adventures, and he embraced household chores. All that remained for our picture-perfect life was a child. But given my age, a seed of worry began to sprout. Then, the cracks began to show. One evening, the expected warmth of his presence was absent. Are you coming home late again today? I asked, worry tinging my voice. Yeah, it'll be the usual time, I guess, came the indifferent reply. Lately, you've been coming home late quite often, I ventured cautiously. Sometimes you even miss the last train. His response was a dismissive huff. Complaining even though I'm working hard? The accusation hung heavy in the air. No, that's not what I meant, I stammered, hurt by his defensiveness. The slammed front door punctuated the end of the conversation. Picking up the knocked-over picture frame from the entrance, a symbol of our fractured happiness, a bitter truth settled in. My anxieties weren't unfounded. His late nights became the norm, replaced by weekends spent alone. Chores, once a shared responsibility, became solely mine. My once attentive husband was now glued to his phone, a constant presence creating a chilling emptiness in our home. Money, too, became a point of contention. Kevin, I began one evening, did you use our money again without asking? My question met with a flippant reply just withdrew my share of the salary. We needed to save, I argued, but his response was a selfish shrug. You earn a high salary and we don't even have kids, so we could live without my salary, couldn't we? His words stung. Was he bothered by my income or something else? Doubts gnawed at me. Had I been too focused on his initial charm, 
overlooking deeper issues. These questions swirled in my mind as I sat at a cafe, a silent observer to the bustling city life, a friend's invitation, a welcome distraction from the growing turmoil within my marriage. Little did I know, this seemingly ordinary day would mark a turning point, leading me to a shocking revelation. A cloudless sky stretched endlessly as I sipped coffee at a bustling cafe window. My gaze drifted outwards, a silent escape from the turmoil within my marriage. Suddenly, a familiar figure caught my eye. There, across the street, was Kevin, my husband, entering an obstetrics and gynecology clinic. But he wasn't alone. Hand in hand, a youthful woman, maybe in her early twenties, walked beside him. My grip on the mug tightened, the ceramic straining under the shock. This couldn't be a coincidence. The friend who'd invited me here, a nurse at this very clinic, confirmed my suspicions. She'd recognized Kevin from the picture I'd shown her, the one capturing our fleeting moment of marital bliss. Patient confidentiality bound her lips, but she couldn't ignore the unease gnawing at me. So she strategically positioned me at this cafe window, a silent observer. Doubt warred with anger. Was it a mere coincidence or a carefully orchestrated visit? The urge to confront them at the clinic surged through me, but creating a scene felt unproductive. Perhaps he was simply accompanying a friend. Hope, a frail flicker ignited within. For an agonizing hour, I waited outside the clinic, scenarios playing on a loop in my mind. Was my husband having an affair? Was this woman pregnant? Or was it a simple errand of support? The wait stretched into an eternity until they finally reappeared. Ignoring my trembling hands, I approached them. Excuse me, I interjected, my voice steely. Could you explain why you were at the obstetrics and gynecology clinic? Kevin, usually glued to his phone, finally met my gaze, his eyes wide with surprise. But it was the woman, shifting uncomfortably, whose reaction held my attention. Denial still clung to a small corner of my heart. Can't talk here, Kevin mumbled, gesturing to the cafe. We walked in silence, the woman's presence a heavy weight. Even after ordering the same coffee I'd had earlier, I didn't speak. The tension in the air hung thick, a suffocating silence urging them to break it. Finally, taking a slow sip, I addressed the elephant in the room. What's the relationship between you two? My question, fueled by months of neglect, bypassed the unnecessary details. Young and charming, Kevin could attract women anywhere. What mattered was the end of our story. The silence stretched, Kevin stammering inelegantly. It became painfully clear. The woman beside him was his mistress, the source of his late nights, his weekend disappearances, and his financial detachment. Every change in his behavior, every broken promise had a reason. Frustration clawed at me. Unable to bear his silence any longer, I turned to the woman. So, the gynecologist? Are you pregnant? My voice, devoid of emotion, echoed in the cafe. Again, silence. Kevin fidgeted, his eyes darting away. Just as I considered giving up, the woman spoke, her voice barely a whisper. You've been caught, she said, a tremor in her voice. We need to talk, but, well, it's nice to meet you. I'm Katie. Her hesitant introduction hung in the air, a stark contrast to the devastation brewing within me. Kevin and I were a whirlwind romance. Now, six weeks pregnant, the future I envisioned shattered as his mistress, Katie, dropped a bombshell. My hand froze, coffee halfway to my lips as she met my gaze. Her seriousness wasn't a challenge, just a stark reality. It was Kevin who took the reins, a bravado replacing his usual nervousness. We're serious, he declared. I feel terrible, but can you give us a divorce? Thanks for the honesty, I retorted, voice laced with bitterness. But a divorce isn't a walk in the park. Childbirth starting over, there's a lot on my plate. Katie leaned forward, a misplaced concern in her eyes. I'll be fine as long as I'm with Kevin. Their misplaced confidence grated. Sure, Kevin wore his heart on his sleeve, but marriage demanded more than impulsive romance. Across from the window, the obstetrics clinic loomed, a symbol of their betrayal. Maybe age did matter. Not the gap itself, but marrying someone with the emotional maturity of a teenager. With their affair and her pregnancy exposed, I should be the one demanding a divorce. Their smugness, however, fueled a fire within me. 
They couldn't win without a fight. Feigning acceptance, I took a calculated risk. Fine, I said, forcing a smile. Their joy was a punch in the gut. They embraced, oblivious to the chaos they'd created. This is perfect timing, Kevin exclaimed. Now we can take that trip next week without sneaking around. Trip? My heart hammered in my chest. Trip? What trip? For the baby, of course, Katie chimed in. We wanted to travel before the belly gets too big. I was going to tell you Kevin had a business trip. My grip on the cup loosened. They thought a divorce meant open season on honesty? Blind to their callousness, they bickered about canceling the trip. We're getting divorced, right? I cut in. So why discuss this trip? Their arguing faltered. Katie, finally noticing my shift, looked at me sheepishly. But you just agreed. Do you understand why this is happening? My voice, though calm, held a steely edge. It's not just me, you know. Kevin mumbled something about moving on. Moving on? I echoed. Let's move on to the real issues then. They exchanged confused glances. Assets and spousal support, I guess? Kevin ventured. The apartment is rented, I began, laying out the practicalities. One of us has to leave. I'll move out. Katie, the ever-helpful mistress, whipped out her phone. Compensation for the affair? She asked Kevin. I fought a smile. Let them see the tangled web they'd woven. The internet says $10,000 to $60,000. Her eyes widened. Let's discuss that later, I continued. After we settle bigger things like the house. Right, Kevin stammered. You'll move out and Katie and I will live there. Great, I said, a ghost of a smile playing on my lips. I'll pack while you're on your business trip. Dividing our assets wouldn't be easy, but facing it head-on felt empowering. Let their honeymoon phase crumble under the weight of reality. The fight for my future had just begun. A whirlwind romance followed by a quick marriage. Everything seemed perfect with Kevin until the bombshell dropped at a cafe. His mistress, Katie, casually revealed her pregnancy, shattering my world. My hand, holding a coffee cup, froze midair as Katie's serious gaze met mine. It wasn't a challenge, just a harsh reality check. Kevin, usually reserved, took the lead, a false bravado replacing his usual nervousness. We're serious, he declared. I feel terrible, but can you give us a divorce? Thanks for the honesty, Kevin, I retorted, voice dripping with bitterness. But a divorce isn't a walk in the park. Childbirth, starting over, that's a lot on my plate. Katie leaned forward, concern misplaced in her eyes. I'll be fine as long as I'm with Kevin. Their misplaced confidence grated. Sure, Kevin wore his heart on his sleeve, but marriage demanded more than impulsive romance. Across from the window, the obstetrics clinic loomed, a constant reminder of their betrayal. Maybe age did matter. Not the gap itself, but marrying someone with the emotional maturity of a teenager. While their affair and her pregnancy were exposed, I should have been the one demanding a divorce. Their smugness, however, fueled a fire within me. They couldn't win without a fight. Feigning acceptance, I took a calculated risk. Fine, I said, forcing a smile. Their joy was a punch in the gut. They embraced, oblivious to the chaos they'd created. This is perfect timing, Kevin exclaimed. Now we can take that trip next week without sneaking around. Trip? My heart hammered in my chest. Trip? What trip? For the baby, of course, Katie chimed in. We wanted to travel before the belly gets too big. I was going to tell you Kevin had a business trip. My grip on the cup loosened. They thought a divorce meant open season on honesty? Blind to their callousness, they bickered about canceling the trip. We're getting divorced, right? I cut in. So why discuss this trip? Their argument faltered. Katie, finally noticing my shift, looked at me sheepishly. But you just agreed. Do you understand why this is happening? My voice, though calm, held a steely edge. It's not just me, you know. Kevin mumbled something about moving on. Moving on? I echoed. Let's move on to the real issues then. They exchanged confused glances. Assets and spousal support, I guess, Kevin ventured. The apartment is rented. I began, laying out the practicalities. One of us has to leave. I'll move out. Katie, the ever-helpful mistress, whipped out her phone. Compensation for the affair? She asked Kevin. I fought a smile. 
let them see the tangled web they'd woven. The internet says $10,000 to $60,000. Her eyes widened. Let's discuss that later, I continued, after we settle bigger things like the house. Right, Kevin stammered. You'll move out, and Katie and I will live there. Great, I said, a ghost of a smile playing on my lips. I'll pack while you're on your business trip. Dividing our assets wouldn't be easy, but facing it head-on felt empowering. Let their honeymoon phase crumble under the weight of reality. The fight for my future had just begun. The following week, ensconced in a hotel room, I received news about a delivery, a filled-out divorce form from my ex-husband. Their eagerness was amusing, sending it during their vacation. Got it. I'll take care of the divorce and moving out tomorrow, I said, picturing their shock when they returned. Two nights later, my phone rang. What the hell? Things gone from the house, my ex-husband bellowed. Not everything, I chuckled. I left clothes and games. In the background, I heard Katie's frantic voice. It was clear they were freaking out. No wonder. While they'd been away, I'd cleared out the house with movers, storing my belongings and selling the rest. Furniture, appliances, even basic items. Everything was gone. The house was now a shell. Why'd you do this? He shrieked. Just followed our agreement, I replied calmly. We split the assets after the divorce. The document, once a formality, became my weapon. The document you signed says so, I stated coolly. My ex-husband sputtered, but silence followed. Regret wouldn't rewind the hasty divorce discussion at a cafe that shattered my life. Save the regrets for after everything's settled, I continued. Didn't the trip and house clearance jog your memory? We haven't discussed the affair's compensation. Recognition dawned on him. Right, compensation. Can it be low? I spent a fortune on the wedding and starting our life together. My wallet's practically empty. Even the trip used up most of my savings, leaving barely $6,000 left. Impressing her is admirable, I said dryly, but overspending isn't. Regardless, my compensation for the affair is $50,000. His silence this time spoke volumes. The reality of the empty house, devoid of furniture or the means to acquire any, must have sunk in. At 26, saddled with a hefty compensation and facing fatherhood, my ex-husband's future looked bleak. Replacing furniture became a distant dream. As a divorcee, his lifestyle was no longer my concern. I'll contact you about the settlement, I concluded, explaining the rationale behind the empty house. This, I hoped, would make him understand the weight of his choices. Later, he agreed to the compensation. My lawyer advised I could ask for more, but considering his age and financial woes, $50,000 would be a significant bite. Money wasn't my motive, so I settled. Their dream of a fresh start together turned sour. Katie, with no savings and a part-time job, wasn't the picture of financial stability. My ex, with barely $6,000, faced a harsh reality. Cardboard boxes served as makeshift furniture and a portable stove their only cooking source, a far cry from their honeymoon phase. Reports stated she left within a week. His fall continued. Now facing child support, he was single and financially strained. The social media posts announcing our divorce and his upcoming marriage with Katie, happily vacationing, came back to haunt him. Inquiries began at work. Admitting their breakup led to questions about the reason. Though evasive, rumors about the affair, pregnancy, compensation, and child support spread like wildfire. The world has its own way of exposing truths. With a tarnished reputation, he resigned. Finding a new job became urgent. Compensation, child support, and his own living expenses loomed. Passionate love, once a positive, became a catalyst for his downfall. This experience became a lesson. Not everyone is cut out for love. Perhaps neither of us were. Happiness manifests in various forms. Right now, focusing on my work brings me contentment. The world may not have a rewind button, but moving forward with clarity is empowering.